Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm flying into Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston, Jamaica today, and I, I saw this was an interesting arrival, and I wanted to uh, to talk a little bit about this for people who are interested in learning more about how arrivals are structured and how to understand these things. This is obviously relatively complex, and I'm going to put it on an overview of where I'm flying in from. You can see we're coming down from Barbados here, and we'll be coming up, and we'll be coming obviously from right to left on your screen, but then landing left to right as we come in here. So we've got to get ourselves turned around to be able to land on runway one two here coming into Manly Airport in Kingston, and this is how we do it. We turn ourselves around here on the Elzer Five arrival. So this starts at the VOR DME, and that's what this symbol is right here. The circle with the uh, with the compass rose, and then in the center, it's got this. I don't know if it's a, a hexagon and uh, inside of a square. That means it's a DME station. DME, the only FA acronym that makes any sense. DME stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. And that means that you can use equipment in your airplane to tell how far you are from the station in nautical miles. So this distance, for example, right here, it says D15.0 MLY. MLY is, of course, re referring to the VOR DME itself. So D15.0 MLY means 15 nautical miles from this station, the VOR. Why is it nautical miles? It's nautical miles because it takes into account the curvature of the earth rather than statute miles that doesn't. So here's the, the general pattern here, right? You've, we, you've, when you're coming from this direction, you hit this VOR DME and you've got to get yourself turned around and back inbound. So let's look down here at what the textual description, when you look at an arrival or a departure, and visually, it's kind of intimidating, I guess you could say, like this one is. The best way to get an understanding of it is to look at the textual description, and that's why they give you both. You can see here, these are, these are the various transitions, and there's Alpin, Datum, Kembo, et cetera, et cetera, and Manly is this one right here, which is the VOR. You can see here Manly. So Alpin, Datum, et cetera, around the horn. And then the one that we're gonna use is the Manly transition. So if we look down here at the textual description of the Manly transition, what it says is, from Manly VOR to Elzer via MLY R270 outbound to D15.0 Manly. Now, what does this mean? Anytime you see R and a compass heading, what that means is radial, it's a radial. So this is the 270 degree radial outbound from the Manly VOR. What a radial is, when you fly a radial, you are flying that heading. So this is the 270 degree radial right here. So what you're flying is a heading of 270. The way to remember what a radial is and how to think about a radial is that radials radiate out. Radials radiate out from the VOR station. So you come here to the Manly VOR and you fly outbound on the 270 degree radial to D15.0 Manly, which is this right here. Then turn right via D17.0 arc Manly and Manly R300 inbound. So you come here to the Manly 15.0 DME mark, which is right here, and then you turn right onto a 17 mile arc inbound on the on the radial 300 into manly and you can see here let me get rid of that you can see here r300 that's the 300 degree radial but you're coming inbound manly r300 inbound so what you're flying in the case when you're flying an inbound on a reciprocal, you're flying, or on a radial, excuse me, you're flying the reciprocal heading. So in this case, 300 minus 180 is the reciprocal. So you'd be coming out 
200 on a, on a heading of 270 to D15.0, turning on, you can see here, D17.0 arc, turn right onto this D17.0 arc, and then inbound on the R300, the 300 radial, which is a, a heading of 120. And the reason why it's a heading of 120 that we're inbound on is because the runway is runway 12. So it's kind of intimidating to look at this visual description of what you're supposed to do. And I, I really actually don't think you could even figure it out if, unless you do look at the textual description. But if you look at the te textual description, put the pieces together, come right out here. And now how, how do you fly a D17.0 arc? That's a, that's a whole nother discussion really. But what that means is you're flying 17 nautical miles from this VOR in an arc. So if you stay on this 17 nautical mile arc, you just maintain a, a distance of 17 miles in a circular pattern around this VOR station. So you come out heading 270 until you hit 15, start your turn and you've got to basically complete your turn by the time you're 17 miles from the, from the VOR station and then turn around back inbound. You can see here at ELSER where it says IF, and what that means, it's the intermediate fix on the approach. So in this particular case, it's the intermediate fix on the VOR DME runway 1-2 approach. You can see it right here, intermediate fix, uh, which is a little unusual because that's the basically the approach you wouldn't really want to fly. Um, and then you see Goodill right here is the final approach fix. Goodill is the final approach fix on the VOR approach. So I'm guessing that what this is going to say somewhere here on this chart is to expect, yeah, see right here. So the, the reason the indications here, the initial, the intermediate fix and the final approach fix for the VOR, for the VOR approach one, two, it's going to say here under routing from Elzer to Goodill via Manly R300, which is heading a one, two, zero. Inbound descending to AD, ATC assigned altitude. Hold at Goodill un, unless and until cleared for the VOR DME runway 1 2 approach procedure. So basically, what that's telling you is you can expect the runway 1 2 uh, VOR approach. That's not the approach I want to fly. I want to fly the ILS approach. And if you look here on the arrival, it's not there but we do have Elzer, which is D15.0, you can see here. So we know that Elzer is 15 nautical miles. We look at the ILS approach, 15 nautical miles is about where Kino is right here. So we know that Elzer is a little bit inside of Kino, but what I'm looking for basically, I'm looking for the clearance to fly the ILS approach. And you can see here on the ILS approach, this D17.0 DME arc off the VOR, which is the same thing that we have on, see it right here, the same thing we have on the arrival. So we know that if we're on this 17 arc, we can come right around here and pick up the final approach for the ILS. I'm a I'm an instrument rated pilot in real life and this stuff is complicated. It's 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 you know particularly these types of arrivals. I don't think this is specific for jets although it does say max 250 knots below 10,000, but if it was a jet only approach it would say, you know, only for jets or only for props or whatever. I'm kind of always surprised at the fact that we have, you know, sim pilots are out there flying these complex procedures oftentimes quite well, but it, this stuff's not easy. And, and you see questions from people, you know, how do you, how do you fly this particular approach or how do you fly this particular arrival? And um, it's, it's not easy stuff. This, uh, you know, I took probably about two years to get my instrument rating. Like I said, this is, this is challenging stuff, but I hope this is also uh, informational for you guys. I hope you've learned something from 
this little video and if you have any questions or comments please don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below and i hope everybody's having a great day